It's destination the Netherlands for Dundee United tonight as they look to continue on an incredible European adventure. Jack Ross's team and 2,000 travelling fans are in Alkmaar hoping to seal progression into the Europa Conference League with Riga or Jill Vicente waiting in the wings. United are 1-0 up from the first leg thanks to Glenn Middleton's stunning strike but Azed Alkmaar have a formidable home record. It's Azed Alkmaar versus Dundee United second leg. Let's hope for another night like last week at Tannadice. Football is back for the first time in a decade. Dundee United against AZ Altmar. That palpable excitement around the whole club tonight. This is what it's all about. Listen again. Who will the crowd? It's Middleton! It is beautiful for Dundee United! Vibrant! Electric night at Tannadice Park. It's very much game on. History beckons indeed. It's a massive 90 minutes coming up for Dundee United. And with me to watch the game are John Rankin and James McFadden. Now, John, United were superb uh, last Thursday evening, but the away leg, as you know, and you found out in 2012, is a different kettle of fish. What did they need to do tonight to be able to progress through this tie? First of all, Tom, I, th I think they have to score tonight. I think that's that's the most important thing. I think they go over there. Uh, if they're going to defend for 90 minutes, I, th I think that's going to be really difficult for them. I think they have to be on the front foot and, and try and get a goal. Uh, what they can't do is what we've done in 2012 and conceded a very early goal, uh, and it puts you right under pressure straight away. How early did you lose the goal? It was in the first five minutes. Right. So you're up it, against, you're up against it straight away, and then mm. the, the home crowd got on their, on their back. So it was a difficult time, but again, tonight, for, for the whole of Scottish football, you're hoping that United can go over there and get a result. Yeah, as they didn't really turn up at Tannadice, it wasn't the side that we were expecting. Do you expect a reaction from them this evening at home? Yeah, I, I think that. Well, you, you would think that there would be, but I think that Dundee United were excellent. You know, their, yeah. their game plan was brilliant, their shape, the discipline of the players, the right times when to sit off it, and then the, the decision to go and press, the ability to go and get the ball forward to, to Stephen Fletcher and, and get players in support of him. I felt as though. As, as much as we were expecting a better performance from AZ, I think it was a really strong Dundee United performance and it's something that they're going to have to do probably better this this week, if that's even possible. But just, you know, you mentioned about an early goal. Don't concede an early goal. Try and frustrate them. We know that they've, they've got a great record at home in Europe. Um, but, you know, Dundee United can go and, and you know, upset the odds and, and what a well, night it would be so. if they could get a... Yeah, let's have a wee look at the uh, Dundee United performance from last week. I think it's probably as good as I've seen United, John, in years. Yeah, you, you could see it. I mean, the, the shape to begin with. Jack obviously done well organised. They, they knew exactly what they were doing. Uh, as Ed started passing it really well, there's a lot of possession in their own half. Never really troubled United at all. But United grew into the game and they found confidence. They created chances. I, I thought Stephen Fletcher was immense. I thought he led yeah. the line really, really well. His link up play bringing other people into it. But not only that, defensively, I felt, I felt, I felt they were really, really comfortable. Yeah, and that goal from Glenn Middleton was absolutely just sensational. What a, a moment of brilliance from him. It was, and that, that's something we know that Glenn Middleton can produce. Um, the challenge for him is, is to do that you know, regularly, yeah. but that, sometimes that's what you need you know, when there's a defensive display. And it's not that Dundee United were backs against the wall, but they just knew they had to be disciplined defensively. You need your players that, that are in the wide areas, the forward areas, sometimes to just produce a moment of magic. It was a great switch of play for Levitt. Great touch. Decision from Middleton to go inside. Jamie McGrath had Lovely played a part pass, as well. Yeah. And then, you know, that's all wasted if he doesn't go there and, and show the composure to finish it off. It was absolutely magnificent. It was. I mean, they've nothing to fear going into this game. They've shown last week that they outplayed AZ last week. They should go in with confidence and belief. It's so important they take that into tonight. Yeah, I think they'll give them the real confidence. Uh, obviously, take away the game at the weekend against Livingston, mm. which they'll be disappointed with. But off the back of last Thursday night's performance, I thought they were great. They, they looked a real team, albeit Jack's not been in that long, but they've gelled really, really quickly. I thought Craig Sibbald and Levitt in the middle of the pitch controlled it. At times, they really controlled the tempo. When they were under pressure, it was a case of take the ball, keep it, borrow it and get it back. And I thought they'd done that really, really well. But as I said, Fletcher and led the front line. But you also look at Edwards and Mulgrew at the back. Uh, and the core of the team all the way through in the middle was really, really good last week. And if they can get that right tonight, especially in the early part of the game, Tom, then I think it'll be imperative for them to go through.
Yeah, well, Charlie McGrew was rested at the weekend, so he should be raring to go tonight, and he's been speaking to our reporter, Brian McLaughlin. Charlie, uh, not long to go now before kick-off. How are the squad feeling about this game tonight? What type of performance is going to be required to make sure you make it to the next stage? There's no doubt it's going to take a good performance for all the lads. and um, From 1-11, we're going to need to be at it for the start. We know it's going to be a really difficult game. It was a difficult game last week at Tannadice, and we know away from home in Europe it's even more difficult, so we're going to need to be off the game. What did you learn about Alkmaar last week? We knew they were going to be a good side, so we know they're a good passing side, they're technically good and, and they're going to try and play it through the lines quickly and, and, and play forward, keep possession of the ball, which European teams often do, so um, that's probably the, the biggest thing we've learned. But the main focus has been us and, and how we approach the game and what we're going to do and that's what, that's what we're thinking about. The manager, Pascal Janssen, was very confident they were going to win this game tonight. Of course, you've got to be confident in your team, so yeah, that's fair enough. It's, um, we need to be confident as well, we need to be ready for the, the challenge, we need to be up for the fight and, and, and ready to, to do our thing. Is it going to take probably an even better performance than it was last week at Tannadice? It is, aye. We're going to need to um, come to the game and try and win the game, try and take it to them, try and keep, have spells of possession in the ball and then, and then be compact and, and, and good off the ball like we were last week, so that's what we're going to try and do. You know, last week when we spoke I said to you, a clean sheet and you're through. You know that now, don't you? Aye. You never told me you told you that. <laughs> I think it was you. I will. I hope I take that now, but um, I will be what to score here as well. Thank you well, Charlie. Good Thank luck. Thank you. Cheers. OK, let's now hear from the man in charge of Dundee United. Jack Ross, he will never forget his first game at Tannadice. I think that much is pretty much guaranteed. An historic result, but they need to finish the job tonight. He's also been speaking to our reporter, Brian McLaughlin. Well, Jack, we've got 1,300 Dundee United fans here tonight. What can you deliver them this evening? Well, just as you spoke about prior, uh, the first leg is we want to we want to win the, the game tonight. And if we do that, then we progress to the next round. It's always been the aim for us, the ambition, even though it's a tough ask. And it's how we want to approach the match tonight. So if we can deliver a similar performance in terms of energy and intensity and how we use the ball, then, then they'll be happy. You've made a number of changes. First of all, a debut for your Australian left back. Tell us why you feel that he's the one to be put into the starting eleven tonight. Well, we've been desperate to get him involved. His um, pedigree speaks for itself, and the experience he has on the international stage and the European stage, and he's ready to go physically. So, look, it's not an easy first game to come into, but he won't be phased by the game here tonight. And uh, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing him in a Dungeon United shirt. This is a, an atmosphere tonight. Although there's only going to be around 12,000 in the stadium. The noise that reverberates around this stadium, can that lift your players just similarly to last week? Yeah, I think it will. We, we loved the atmosphere last week. Um, you know, this stadium is very similar to Tynecastle Easter Road, the feel around it, and we, we know the atmosphere that can be generated in those stadiums as well. So we, our supporters played a huge part in us winning the game last week, and the noise they're making already, I think the players will enjoy that and they'll respond to it as well. Can you do it? Yeah, of course we can. That's the message to the players, and we felt that prior to the first leg. And, yeah, there's a lot of belief in that changing room. Thanks, Jack. Uh, all the best, Jack. Good luck. Cheers, man. James, as John said, Stephen Fletcher will be very important tonight for Dundee United. His game intelligence, his link-up play, his aerial threat uh, were excellent last Thursday. Yeah, and it's no surprise. Um, he's a player that has obviously spent a lot of his time playing the Premier League in England. Uh, and you can see the qualities he has. You know, the awareness there. Maybe a, maybe a younger striker snatches at the shot there yeah. and, and, and tries to get the shot away given that you know he's just in the door he's maybe trying to impress but he's got the presence of mind the awareness to bring his teammates into play and also you know when he does link it up he then gets into the box you know it's like right I'll come short and I'll help the team get it to his teammate I've done my job I'm going to get in the box I'm going to cause a nuisance that should have been a corner that one but that shows you the, the, the quality that he's got he's still got that sharpness and you can see that he's he's taking on that responsibility of being a leader in the dressing room as well which having played with him <laughs> like yourself yeah. it's, it's quite surprising but um, it's great to see him with that hunger and, and that, that desire to keep playing as well and he, he'll be a huge player tonight if Dundee United are to get success That's no doubt about that John, uh, United support last Thursday. That's as good an atmosphere as I've seen in Tannadice probably ever. They were immense. Obviously, they're not going to have that tonight. There still is 2,000 fans going over, but United need to create that energy themselves tonight. Yeah, I think they do. I mean, as you said, last week, the fans were right behind them. The noise was incredible in the stadium. It really was. 
but they don't have that tonight, so they need to find that energy from somewhere else. I think they'll find it from within. You look at the, they're halfway through the tie, they're, they're leading 1-0, they'll find that energy and that desire to try and get through the first period. I, I, I keep speaking about it, I think the first 20 minutes is hugely important tonight. They have to get their distances correct between the midfield and front. It can't be uh, Stephen Fletcher isolated up there. They need to get near him and try and get the team up the pitch. We know AZ will have a lot of possession, but at the same time, United need to be comfortable and confident enough that they don't have the ball, that they're covering those distances and keep my clean sheet in the early stages of the game. Yeah, James, uh, if United do try and sit in and protect this lead, it could be a long old night for them, couldn't it? Because what brought them success last week was their intensity, was their willingness to press high and go after the game. Yeah, I, I think that's important. I think it's you know it's important for them they don't just go, right, this is going to be easy, which I know they won't because you listen to Jack Ross, he's very level-headed. It won't be a case of, right, we'll just go and do the exact same because it will be you know a tougher task for them. But I think it's a dangerous game to say, right, we're going to try and hang on for 90 minutes. But It's tough with, to do. It is, but with the team selection, that suggests that they're going to try and approach it in the same manner, try and at the very least match the levels of, of last week and try and improve on it. And they've got players in that team all over it that can handle the ball, so that's going to be hugely important for them tonight. Yeah, Aziz Bahish comes in for his debut, John, at left-back, a, a vastly experienced player, in a position maybe that Dundee have struggled to fill over the years in the, uh, that left-back area. He'll be vital tonight, you think? Yeah, since, since Jamie Robson left, Scott McMahon filled it uh, briefly last season, and then Kieran Freeman, I thought he'd done really well last week, actually. But he comes in this week, it'll give him a bit more balance on the left-hand side. Especially in attacking, if he can get forward and get balls into the box, it'll help Stephen Fletcher attack it. So I'm really looking forward to seeing him playing, but I'm looking forward to the game in general tonight. Were you surprised to see Glenn Middleton not start tonight on the bench? Um, possibly, but maybe it's you know part of the tactics to keep it tight and bring him on. And as a well, he's not going to be a secret weapon because you know all about him. But it's <laughs> a bit of freshness and somebody that can take players out of the game. Okay, well it is time for kick off. Can United repeat the heroics of last Thursday evening? Let's find out with your commentary team, Michael Stewart and Liam McLeod. Good evening, the AZ Stadion, which holds just shy of 20,000 people, but only about 12,000, I think, inside the ground for this match. And this is a massive game in Dundee United season, even this early. And this time a week ago, we were all anticipating a tough night for the Terrors against a top Dutch side. What happened was a magnificent performance of poise, energy and vibrancy from United which has given them a shot at a potential Europa Conference League playoff against Gil Vicente or Riga, who are tied up at 1-1. That second leg kicks off at the same time as this one. In the last two European ties, a decade or so back, it's been the away leg that has cost Dundee United. They beat Slonj Wrocław of Poland and drew with Dynamo Moscow at Tanadice, but they lost on the road as they look to win a continental tie for the first time since a 17-0 aggregate win over Andorran Minnows Principat in 1997 when Tommy McLean was in the hot seat that his older brother sat in for so many years and with so much success, including on nights like this. Stephen Fletcher has looked the part in a United jersey so far and he's going to be so important for them this evening. Even just for his hold-up play. Well, there's the home team this evening. As it Altmar, as they look to try and turn this tie in their favour. We saw youngster Myron van Brederode come off the bench last Thursday. Since then, he's made his first start for the club and he scored their second in their league opener, which saw them beat go-ahead at Eagles 2-0. Pavlidis got the other one. We didn't see the best from the midfield three last week. Reinders, De Witt and Plassi are more than capable and more capable than what we saw last week. There's a certain amount of pressure on the hosts. The skipper, Bruno Martins, Indy. As they meet the officials in the match referee tonight. Spanish familiar figure, Antonio Miguel Lahoz, who took charge of the 2021 Champions League final, no less. Won by Chelsea against Manchester City in Porto. 
not long after that, he was the referee for Scotland's Euro 2020 group game against England in London last June. Well, Jack Ross has left his goal scorer last week on the bench. Glenn Middleton drops out. He's a sub tonight. There's a debut for Australia international Aziz Vich at left back. Great pedigree. He was in the Istanbul Basek Shihir side that won the Turkish top flight a few years ago. He's a former PSV Eindhoven player as well, so his knowledge of the Dutch game might come in handy. Jamie McGrath handed a start by Jack Ross again, as he did against Livingston at the weekend. He's got Europa League experience from his time at Dundalk. And those two, having that knowledge, could be crucial this evening. It's just about ready to go in North Holland. As it